would like to give you my talk now of uh, Wagner's Ring der Nibelungen. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this routine for absolutely centuries. <laughs> And last year, I, at one concert, I thought, really, I haven't got the face to keep on doing this. So I left it out at this particular concert. And after the concert, this lady came back and absolutely in a fury, she said, well, she said, you never did your Wagner. Well, I said, I've done it so often. I mean, really, she said, well, she said, I heard it when I was a student at college, and this is my daughter, and this is my granddaughter. <laughs> and I brought them to hear you do your Wagner, and you didn't do it. <laughs> so you see, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. <laughs> so this is for the lady who's brought her granddaughter to hear it tonight for the first time. But for the rest of you who know it as well as I do, please do feel free to recite it along with me. <laughs> I know that analyses of the ring are frequently given by some great expert for the edification of other great experts. <laughs> But these are usually so esoteric as to leave the average person as befogged as before. <laughs> and I think it's inclined to discourage him from going altogether, which is a great pity because the ring is a magnificent work. Supposing you can make any sense out of it. <laughs> so I would like to tell it to you as from one ordinary everyday opera goer to another. Now, the first thing you have to remember is that practically every person and event in this work has what is termed a light motif. <laughs> that I don't want you to let this make you nervous. <laughs> All it actually means is a theme song. Well, now, it comes in four parts. Das Rheingold, Die Valkyrie, Siegfried and Goethe Dammerung. And it's the only grand opera on earth that comes in the giant economy package. <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> now. <laughs> The whole thing starts with the prelude to Rheingold. The orchestra play the chord of E flat major for about six minutes. <laughs> There's not too much I need tell you about this. If you know the chord of E flat major, you know the prelude to Rheingold. <laughs> Well, then, the scene opens in the River Rhine. In it. <laughs> and swimming around there, you, you have the three Rhine maidens, or Nixes. They are a sort of an aquatic Andrew sister. <laughs> and they sing their theme, which is as follows. <laughs> I won't translate it because it doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> well, these Rhine maidens are looking after a lump of magic gold. And the magic of this gold consists of the fact that anybody who will renounce love and make a ring out of this gold can become master of the universe. This is the gimmick. <laughs> now, up from underneath the Rhine, all of a sudden, there comes a little dwarf called Alberic. Here he is. After glatter, glitter, glimmer, big like a sauce. Mit Hannen und Fussen, ich passe noch Kälte, der schlägt und das Schlupf ab. Feucht ein Nass, fühlt wie die Nase. Well, as you can plainly see, he's exceedingly unattractive. <laughs> And he makes a pass at the Rhine Maidens, who think he's perfectly ghastly. 
So the Rhine maidens tell him. So Albrecht thinks, well. He thinks, I'm obviously not going to get any love here, so I may as well renounce it and take this magic gold and make this ring and become master of the universe. So he steals the gold and he takes it down under the Rhine with him. And here he is making this ring. unionized yet <laughs> but he makes the ring and here is the theme of the ring I'd like you to remember that because you'll be amazed where this ring is going to get to <laughs> before we're through with all this business well there's Albrecht down there with the ring and the Rhine maidens are swimming around at sea level and up here you see this is a vertical story <laughs> up here you get Wotan the head god and the perfectly crashing boar <laughs> well he and his wife Mrs. Frika Wotan <laughs> That's her name. <laughs> Are having a castle built for them called Valhalla. It's been built by a couple of giants called Fasolt and Fafna. Well, naturally, these giants wish to be paid for building this edifice, and what they wish to be rewarded with is Freya. Well, now, Freya is Wotan's sister-in-law and a perfectly beautiful girl. <laughs> She's currently looking after the Valhalla branch of Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> well, when the giants take her away, of course, there's no, no beauty parlour, and Mrs. Boatown starts to look terribly scruffy. <laughs> and she's a frightful nag, so she nags and nags at Boatown to get her back again, which she does. Well, then the only other thing the giants will settle for for building Valhalla is this magic ring that Alberic has just made. So Wotan goes from Valhalla down to where Alberic is and cons him out of this ring. Well, naturally, Alberic is simply furious. <laughs> and he puts a terrible curse on the ring. curse, isn't it? 